Good morning, class, and welcome to this week's session. Now, as you'll notice, in this week's module, you'll find a PowerPoint on gel babies. This is one of the most, um, I would say, I one of my favorite topics and lectures to give when I'm talking about family and marriage, and I actually bring it into social problems and intro to sociology. Um, the reason I really like it is because this is one of the topics that we all think about when we're bringing up family, when we're bringing up children, are what happens to those children that are born behind bars or that they have parents that are serving um, and they are away from their parents during that time. Um, so just to get started, here in the United States, about two-thirds of women in the U.S. Um, are mothers. So depending on how the economy is doing, we um, there's actually a correlation of women serving time in jail and in prison. If the economy is not doing very well, we see that there are um, women going into prison due to theft, so due to robberies because lack of income or trying to survive. So during the 2007 um, recession, we saw that crime rates actually went up for men and women in terms of theft and robbery. Um, up until the 1950s, prison nurseries were the norm in most states, and most were raised behind bars by their children. The other thing too that we are that we see when it comes to mothers behind bars is that when a female is serving time and she has arrived to the prison jail for the first time, she's given a pregnancy test. Now the reason that she's given a pregnancy test is to see if she is carrying a child. If she is with child, the woman will receive um, health care during that time that she is carrying the child and also after the child has been born. She will be taken to regular doctor visits, especially as we see in the last trimester where a female goes to see their um, physician on a weekly basis to make sure that everything is in preparation for the birth of the child. Um, one of the questions, or actually three of the questions that I always like to bring up, and I'll bring it up in this week's discussion as well, is is jail the ideal place to raise a child? Now, oftentimes I have students say no because, you know, a child is going to remember, their memories are going to be with, you know, when my mom was in jail and I was growing up. Well, you have to take into consideration, as you'll see through the various slides, that children that are being raised behind bars with their mothers are usually up until a certain age. Now, if you look back to your own childhood, do you have memories that you remember when you were born? <laughs> or if you were a year old or you were two years old? So does that play a role in maybe, you know, jail being a place where a mother can bring up their child for the first couple of years of their life? Now, should a mother have the option of raising children while serving prison? Now, I've had students say that, you know, that female is in prison serving a sentence for something that they committed. Maybe it is petty theft. Maybe it is drug charges. Should they be rewarded? That's a, what's the word that usually comes up. Should these women be rewarded, right? They did a bad thing. Why should they have the ability, the advantage, of raising their children? Are they not learning a lesson? Should society have compassion over mothers who are in jail? Should we have compassion? Should we say, you know what, they messed up, they're going to change. They're not going to, you know, they're going to learn from this by having their child. If they serve time and they have their child there, you know, what are the chances that they are going to leave prison and then come back? Okay, so again, these discussions that we'll be having um, in class. So in the United States, women who give birth in prison can keep the child for them for the first 18 months. Um, usually 18 months is usually around the average age, and the reason so is because, as we know, um, it is very important if a woman chooses to breastfeed, uh, one year is usually what is recommended in terms of the nutrition that that child will be receiving, um, all the nutrients from breast milk. Um, here is a prison. 
um, in El Salvador, 1,700 women are serving here. As you guys look through these pictures, right, here is a mother in her, in her jail cell. Think of the living arrangements that they have, right? These are very much, very different um, cells that we would see, for example, here in the United States, right? I've had students point out saying, well, Ms. White, depending where you live, such as, you know, here in this jail that is a third world country, this may be maybe the norm of their living arrangements even at home, right? So again, very much taken into consideration where these women come from, you know, what to them is considered, you know, is that sanitary, right? That would never pass through um, our regulations here in prisons here in the United States. In Sweden, Europe, and India, babies can be accommodated for up to a year. An average stay is about three months. In India, jails are required to offer nurseries and daycare for mothers and children. And we're going to be talking about how that is actually becoming more um, more acceptable and we're starting to see many programs throughout the United States that are doing this. I always say that if I ever have to do any time anywhere in the world, I would hope it would be Russia because I love their little outfits, right? It's cute the little polka dots, huh? So in Russia, children are born into pre-trial detention prison camps. They live at their children's home. Um, then they're sent to a, a civilian orphanage or to live with their families. Here the mothers get breaks and then they can see their kids every single day, right? So they're interacting with their kids on a daily basis as the kids do know who they are. In Chile, um, children begin taking a state-run education program at the six months of age. So here we're being, they're being educated, right, in terms of how to be a parent, you know, how, you know, the various stages, you know, that the children grow up. You know, this is very different because as we know, in the, you know, in the regular, in the real world, we don't have to take classes, right? Any state-run educational classes, you know, to, to be licensed to be a parent. We're actually going to have a conversation about that. Um, should parents be required to get a license to become parent? In Mexico, children are required to stay with their mothers until they're eight years of age, and they have the freedom to leave on the weekends and holidays. So that pertains to the children. Um, El Salvador has imprisoned 628 women for having abortions or miscarriages since its abortion law was passed in 1998. Now, when students come across this slide, they're always taken aback because, wait, what do you mean for miscarriages or for abortions? These are abortions and miscarriages that um, women did to themselves. So they self-inflicted um, abortions and miscarriages on their own, either through using um, various tools such as a coat hanger, um, taking different types of remedies such as herbs, um, different concoctions that you can so that you can self-induce a, a miscarriage and or an abortion because it is um, illegal to have an abortion in various countries around the world. And this usually is very much tied to religion as well. Um, in Lima, here's another example of women in having nurseries in bringing up their children. Here's an image of children um, gathered with their children and their mothers during Ramadan. Now, someone could see a picture of this and not even know, right, from looking at it without having the caption that these females are serving time, right? In Germany, Germany has placed a very interesting program where the mother, again, depending on what kind of crime she's committed, if it is something like um, rape, murder, you know, a, a, a a high crime, then they're not able to partake in this program. But in this program, we have qualified mothers, right, that have permitted work release. They're allowed to leave the prison every single morning, and they pretty much go about their day at home, cleaning the house, getting dinner ready for the kids. They see the kids back from school. You know, they may help with the homework, you know, help get them ready for dinner, right? And at the end of the day, they go home. They go back to the prison um, to sleep there. And I've had students say, well, what is, what's the point of them serving 
time then, right? Like, they're not in jail. They're at home. They're working, you know, at home. They're some, I have to say, they're probably watching TV, right? But are they learning from this? I've had students also say, you know, I think this is a wonderful program because what is going to happen when they're released from jail? They need um, some guidance. They need some tools in having them acclimate to life behind bars. This is going to be the norm for them when they come home to their children. Maybe they have more than one child at home, right? This is helping them. This is like a rehab program in the sense, right, that they are having them acclimate to their life outside, right, of prison. So we'll have a little discussion on what you guys think if this is a good program to implement or not. Here in the United States, and I actually need to update to that, there are actually a lot more states that are partaking with prison nurseries. Here in um, Bakersfield, there is a nursery program as well as in um, Fresno area. Competitions are very fierce. Only mothers who are serving short sentences for nonviolent crimes are eligible. So as you'll see in the documentary that I show you, um, you'll see that there's actually competition between um, two mothers in trying to see who's going to get a spot in the child nursery. Now studies show that the first two years of a baby's life are very critical and therefore babies do benefit from the bond, right, having that mother. We're taught now that when a child is born, having that skin-to-skin contact. I remember when my first child was born, they placed her right on me and she, it's like she knew the instinct that her first thing she needed to do was to eat, right? So that bonding, that skin to skin warm contact that is very much important to children, right? Um, women who are allowed to raise their children in jail are more likely to return to crime. Therefore, setting that example, being taught in those educational classes that are being taught behind bars in how to be a better parent, right? Studies do show that they're more likely not to return. Again, that's not to show, as you guys are going to see in the documentary, that women do come back into the prison setting. And that's a whole different discussion to have, right? Because, you know, what, what, what happens that they come back, right? You would think you're going to see a story of this one mother. It's not her first time being in jail. It's her second time. And you'll hear her story. Now, do you feel sorry for this mother or do you not? Or are there reasons or does she have more um, issues um, at hand? in terms of um, why she's back in jail the second time. I don't want to give it away yet, but I'll bring it up um, I'll bring it up into discussion on Saturday as you guys will be watching um, the documentary for your um, for your discussion on Friday night. Um, and then I always like to end with oh so again research has shown right that programs such as these prevent developmental issues caused by babies' early separation anxieties from their parents, right? And then I always like to end with fathers. What about dads? Why are there no known programs here in the United States nor around the world where children can live in prison with their fathers? And is that fair? That is another question that I ask in discussion. Why isn't it that fathers are not allowed to be in the same type of program such as mothers have, because as we all know, there are really bad mothers as well as there are very bad fathers out there in this world, right? What if the child, all they have is their father and their father's behind bars? So we'll be discussing that and you guys will be bringing that into discussion as well. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Please do not forget that you have a news reflection that is due this Sunday. Um, Please, oh, you guys, no, it's not due this Sunday. It's due the following Sunday. I keep telling all my classes it's due. Um, please refer to your Module 1, um, your Module 1 for instruction as well as an example. So I'm sorry, you guys, it's not due this Sunday. It's due the following Sunday. If you guys have any questions, please get in touch with me. Um, enjoy your rest of your week, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.